Hey, good morning, everybody. Why don't we all stand? I was just wondering, did anything happen this week to you guys? That's good. <laughs> Calvary Chapel. <laughs> you all look so rested. Look at you. <laughs> Bright-eyed and bushy-tailed on a beautiful fall Sunday morning. We want to let you know what's going on with our ha holiday calendar for uh, this week and this month, rather, at Calvary Chapel, Herba Valley. And welcome to our online family as well. Good morning, church. So our leadership meeting for today will be rescheduled for next Sunday. So for those of you who are in leadership, please be prepared for that, and you can go back home and get into your blankies. <laughs> Today after church, you're all coming down from your sugar high, right, from last <laughs> night? We know how it is, yeah. Our Women of the Word Christmas Coffee is hosting um, 
uh, Christmas coffee. It's, the theme is the crown and the cross. So that's going to be Saturday, December 5th. Uh, from 4 to 6 p.m. and it's $10 per person. If you could please help us out by paying when you sign up, then that would really help us out for our planning. And then our Grief Share Getaway is going to be the the weekend before Thanksgiving. It's in Ottawa at Calvary Chapel Mountain Center. We were able to bring the cost down to $100 for the weekend, which includes your room and the food and, and um, a book that we want to share with you on Saturday. But we understand if you cannot make it on for the whole weekend, then please join us on Saturday day. And that's just $25. And that will include your food and your book and special time of ministering in that regard. Our Thanksgiving dinner, please, if you'd have nowhere to go or if you have nowhere you want to go, <laughs> please be my guest at my home. I would love to be able to host those of you for Thanksgiving Day at my home. Just let me know, sign up, or whatever the case may be for that. And then we would really love to do a Christmas choir, but we need to get our voices together so that we can begin to stretch out those vocal cords there. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram and please hit that share button. Thank you so much. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you that it is your breath in our lungs and we praise you, Lord. We praise you, we worship you, we love you, we adore you, Lord, for great are you, Lord. We just want to recognize your greatness. We ask that you receive these tithes and offerings, the bottom of my our, our hearts unto you in Jesus name amen well praise the Lord thank you Jesus thank you father thank you Holy Spirit giving us that peace and that comfort that we know you are the strength of our lives Lord let us submit our lives even more to you we've held back you know that we know that now continue to encourage us, allow us to give everything to you. We want to hold back so much, Lord God, but yet we know deep down inside you have the best for us. So speak to us today, encourage, encourage us today, challenge us today, we pray. We thank you for this body of Christ. We thank you for this gathering. And it is in Jesus' name we pray these things and say, Good morning. How's everybody doing? Man, we had a great time Wednesday night. I mean, wow, you know, and and these winds and everything just were scattering my sinuses and my brains were all over the place. And so, man, came down Wednesday night, a couple of chili dogs and a bag of chips and a Snickers bar, and man, I felt a lot better. You know, so if you missed out, I don't, you know, well, sorry. <laughs> we had a great time. Thanks for all those family recipes and all those great uh, th those foodstuffs that you shared with us and man it was great what a great time so check out some of the pictures and you know and just have some fun uh, with that on Instagram and things like that always check in there's something cooking check in with Facebook likewise and see what's happening amen Revelation chapter 10 Revelation chapter 10. Lord, bless your word this morning, and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, as you're turning to Revelation chapter 10, we re remember that we've just finished six trumpet judgments. So remember, we went through the, the seals that Jesus broke on the scroll, the seven seals, and then we've walked through the first six of the seven trumpet judgments and chaos, destruction, and carnage has been absolutely abundant. Abundant. But thankfully, as Scripture encourages us, that we that are born again, we will not have to expose ourselves to these end time scenarios praise the lord i mean this is as bad as it's going to get right now with these winds and and stuff and i mean this is it you know so we're grateful for that 
Now, we've seen the chaos, the destruction, and the carnage. And yet, prior to the introduction of the seventh trumpet, and it's so of the Lord, the Lord is taking a break, if you will. He's taking that time to allow us to reflect. And isn't that so the Lord? God always wants to give us an opportunity to reflect. And so many times, and a world hating the Lord always wants to point their finger. Well, Jesus this, or Jehovah God that, or whatever. But in Scripture, we see that God is always desiring people to come to their senses and come to Him. And I really believe we see this as we've taken a break after the six trumpets, and, and in chapter 10 here, it's sort of like the Lord saying, hey, time to reflect. And remember when we first began these, these judgments, these seals, and these trumpets? We established early that this is a syllabus from the Lord. We always, throughout our lives, we've always said, Oh man, if I only knew what was going to happen in the future, then I'd conduct myself, accord myself accordingly. But well, we see. We see clearly the Lord's syllabus. He says, hey, one, two, three, A, B, C, this is what's going to happen. And so now it's on you. It's not on the Lord. You know, and that whole idea, well, what, the, what has the Lord done for me lately? Well, right now, this morning, we're going to see in chapter 10, he's trying to get our attention. Trying to remind us that he's in charge, and we need to submit to that reality. And that, that's tough for our, our broken posture, our sin-filled nature. It's hard for us to submit to the Lord, and God knows that. That's why he gives opportunity after opportunity after opportunity for us to change our mind. So once again, I really believe this is one of these times where the Lord is saying, hey, let's take a break and let's review Let's review. And so once again, how gracious our Lord is. How good, kind, patient, long-suffering He is with us. Father, forgive them because they know not what they do. I mean, more telling words I know not. Jesus hanging on the cross. Praying for forgiveness for us. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. But yet God's, even God's timing runs out eventually. Eventually. Everything, all good things must come to an end, I suppose. And so let's continue to make sure that we are secure in our salvation. And then make it our desire and our goal to introduce the Lord to those around us. Amen? What a joy. And so as we pick up in Revelation chapter 10, verse 1, John reporting, and John says, I saw still another mighty angel. And so these heavenly angelic beings are abundant. And John is saying, I, 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 still another. In addition to everything else I've reported earlier, I saw another, another mighty angel, and the, at the most base posture, the definition of angel simply is God's messenger. So John is saying here, I, I, I still I saw another one of God's messengers. God's messengers. Part of the problem with modern day Christianity and there's several issues, but the things, the, the couple of things that I see, and the one thing I'm going to point out today, is in modern day Christianity, and even Christianity in a Western world, if you will, we don't believe the Bible 100%. We kind of pick and choose what works for us. And yet here, John is reporting, I saw still another mighty messenger of God. 
Now, this has got, gotten John's attention. John is in full attention of what's going on. And he has been giving, given the privilege to report these things to us. Now, what are we going to do with this stuff? Are we going to just say, well, you know, it's a nice kind of a fairy tale, and, you know, I, I don't really know if I believe this or not. And that's the problem. We're powerless as a church because we don't believe in God's mighty messenger. We kind of do things on our own. Oh, well, that's nice. Oh, that works well for you, what have you. But I'm telling you, if we have not embraced the Bible 100%, we are living a powerless Christianity. We just are. God's the one saying, hey, this is what's going on. I want to give you the syllabus. I want to give you the breakdown. But it's up to you to, to receive it. It's up to you to understand it. It's up to you to spend time with my word. The psalmist tells us in Psalm 138 that the Lord has exalted his word above his, his holy name. His word. Psalm 138. Take a look at that. God has exalted his word above his holy name. That was an incredible thing when I first found that years ago. I thought, wow, I didn't know if I read it correctly. But God's word is paramount to getting to know who the Lord is and allowing the Lord to work through us. So John is saying, once again, I saw still another mighty angel coming down from heaven, clothed with a cloud. Wow, pretty impressive. Coming down from heaven. So John is in the heavenly realm, and he's observing, and this mighty angel is descending from heaven. Amazing. Clothed with a cloud. And a rainbow was on his head. His face was like the sun, and his feet like pillars of of fire. And so once again, consistently through our reading and our study, we see that John is doing his best to describe what he's seeing. And he said, as, as we see, his face was like the sun, his feet like pillars of fire. And then he moves on. He doesn't spend more than three seconds in his description. And is, isn't it amazing that we have two-hour sermons on this guy saying, I went to heaven, and let me give you every detail on what happened. I don't find that scriptural at all. I find John saying, hey, this is kind of what it looked like. This is the best reference I can give you, but it's not important. Let's move on. And I'm all for it. I'm like, great. I get the idea. I get the idea that this mighty angel was pretty spectacular. I get it. And now it's time to move on. It's time to move on. And so this mighty angel had a little book, and this book was open in his hand. And this mighty angel, he set his right foot on the sea, and he had his left foot on the land, and this mighty angel cried with a loud voice as, as kind of like, a lion, I suppose, John is saying. That's the best way I can describe it. Like a lion's roar. Now, let's agree that if we were walking around in the jungle, and if we heard a lion's roar, that would get our attention, wouldn't it? Right? No matter what it was that we were previously three seconds ago engaged in, if we heard that lion's roar, all of a sudden that would have our full attention. You agree? Yes. And so, John has, this has arrested John's full attention, this spectacular being. I mean, John is just overwhelmed. He's got to be, I mean, he doesn't spend a lot of time on it, but we can imagine, man, John, he's got to be overwhelmed with this spectacular vision. I mean, he was in, engaged in this. He cried this mighty angel cried with a loud voice as when a lion roars. So as if coming down from heaven clothed 
with a cloud wasn't enough. When the mighty angel cried out, there was a heavenly response. Seven thunders uttered their voices. So it was a give and take here. The mighty angel had said something, and then the halls of heaven responded. Absolutely spectacular. Can you, I mean, can you just, you got to take a minute and just kind of dwell on it. When I lay down to go to sleep at night, my, my brain kind of opens up, and I like to dwell on things, and it helps me relax and go to sleep. And I kind of put myself in John's shoes. And man, Lord, it must, how can you? I mean, I just want to try to imagine what John was experiencing. This overwhelming satisfaction. I mean, just how do you respond to these sorts of things? Absolutely insane. So he cries out like a lion, and the heavenly realm responds. Seven thunders. Man, absolutely incredible. A mighty angel indeed, a mighty being, a being, this created being commands attention, rightfully so. Rightfully so. God's messenger. He's got John's attention, and I trust that this scenario has our attention likewise. The power of heaven revealing itself to you and I today. Because we believe. We believe in Scripture. So in this mighty angel's hand was a little book. A little book. As we compare the idea in chapter 5, remember when we looked at the scroll? The scroll that, which was only allowed to be opened by Jesus. Remember that in chapter 5? And also the description of this scroll. It was, the, the scroll was written on, on, on the front, on the back, on the sides, whatever. I mean, wherever there could be Writing, there was writing on this scroll. I mean, John looked at the scroll, and it was still sealed up, but he, John still saw that there was just inscriptions all over this scroll. Amazing. When I was overseas and for temporary duties and things uh, in my military career, uh, Connie, of course, she would write me a letter, and, and it was great. And she'd uh, write on, on the, the front of the page, and, and she'd flip it over and continue writing. And as she get down to the bottom, and she still wasn't done with what she was saying, so she started writing up the, the hem uh, of, the, of the paper, right? And, it, and so I'd have to kind of follow it up like this and then turn it upside down and, you know, go across the top and down and then sideways, you know, and, and such. I mean, anywhere there was a space, she would be still writing, and it would just crack me up. And that's sort of the idea that I got in this comparison with the scroll in chapter 5. I mean, every place there was a, a space, it was filled up with information. But at contrary, in verse 2 of chapter 10, there was a little book. So the scroll in chapter 5, which was packed, cram packed full of information. Here, this mighty angel had this little book, and secondly, it was opened. And again, we remember that the scroll in chapter 5 was sealed. And only Jesus, only Jesus was the one to be able to open it. But this is, in contrast, a little book. And it was opened. Little indicating easy to read and opened available to read unlike the sealed scroll this little book was available for everyone to read anybody remember the, the days of the newspaper yeah, probably days gone by I understand but reach way back. I remember in the early 80s, there was a newspaper that came out. It was called USA Today. And again, I, when I was in the military, I was an international guy. 
I mean, my bags were packed. Uh, I'd get home uh, for a couple of days, and I'd just pack my bags and just wait for the phone call. That was my life. I loved it. But then I fell in love and realized this is not going to work. So short-lived. But during those times, I would get the newspaper USA Today. And the reason I got that paper is because, first of all, I could be anywhere, either in the United States or internationally, and I'd get the USA Today and I'd have a, just a good general idea of what was cooking in the United States. But what really appealed to me with that paper, the USA Today newspaper, was they put it together editing-wise was when you began an article, and this is the early days of USA Today, when you began an article, you would start at the top, of course, and it would end on the same page. Remember when you get the LA Times, and you get halfway through the article, and it said, please turn to uh, page A4. I'm like, wait a minute, what, okay. I mean, I used to hate that. I'd kind of lose my thought, and sometimes i think, well, I'll get back to it or whatever, and I'd pick up another column or something, and I, I didn't like it, but I liked this idea. That was the whole point be uh, by the, about this newspaper, USA Today, is they just gave you a snapshot. They gave you all the information you needed, and you didn't have to turn the page. That was appealing to me. And it was, secondly, it was written at like a fifth grade level. Oh, man. I'm in heaven. Are you kidding me? And at the time, it was like 25 cents, you know, when the New York Times was a buck or something. But, uh, man, they had my attention. And that's the idea here with this little book. It can be approached. We get it. Hey, I can read it. Yeah, okay, it's open. I, I, it's little. There's information here, but it's not overwhelming. I get it. It's the USA Today version. I love it. And that's what's going on here with this little book. And that's so the Lord. The Lord is saying, oh, no, come. I want you to review this. I want you to take a look at this information in this little book. I'll walk you through it. God, the Holy Spirit, the teacher is saying, I'll walk you through it. And so what a joy and how comforting this reality is. How much John must have been comforted by this reality. There was a little book and it was open. Wow. Very cool. And in verse 4, now when the seven thunders uttered their voices in response to the mighty angel's comment, whatever that comment was, the, the seven thunders responded and uttered their voices, John says, oh, I was about ready to write. I heard the, the seven thunders, and I was going to write down what they had said, what they had said, but I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, seal up the things which the seven thunders uttered, and do not write them. Do not. And so John is... experiencing a privileged posture, he heard something that we don't know what he heard. And it's up to us, perhaps, to say, Lord, what is it that you want me to do with this information? Not quite sure right now. Do not write these things, John. Do not write these things. The angel whom I saw standing on the sea and on the land raised up his hand to heaven and swore by him, swore by God, who lives forever and ever, who created heaven and the things that are in it, yes, the earth and the things that are in the earth, and the sea and the things that are in it, that there should be delay no longer. Even God's time clock runs out. No more delay. John, no more delay. Now that John was able to record. There'll be no more delay. 
But in the days of, sound, of the sounding of the seventh angel, which we will see later down the road as the Lord tarries, in the days of the sounding of the seventh angel, he is about to sound, and when he does, the mystery of God would be finished as he declared to his servants and the prophets. The mystery of God. The mystery of God. Paul the Apostle talks in great length concerning the mystery of God. Now, a mystery is something that is hidden. And a mystery has to be revealed. It has to be revealed. That secret has to be revealed. And in Romans chapter 16... Verse 25, Romans 16, 25. Be sure to jot it down, take a look at it later, but I'm going to read to us. Romans 16, 25. Paul tells us, Now to him who is able to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery kept since the world began, but now made manifest, and by the prophetic scriptures made known to all nations according to the commandment of the everlasting God for obedience to the faith, to God alone wise be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. Paul revealing, hey, this mystery, a mystery of the Lord, Paul saying, God's mystery revealed to me and now revealed to you, readers of the letters, to the, the letter to the Romans. The mystery is that God wants to establish you and I. He wants to establish us according to the finished work of Jesus Christ. God wants to establish you and I. according to the finished work of Jesus Christ. And it was a mystery because we remember that when Jesus was speaking to Nicodemus, and, and again, the context here, Nicodemus was a teacher, a religious teacher. And to Nicodemus, it was a mystery that his life needed to be established through the finished work of Jesus Christ. That was a mystery to Nicodemus. Nicodemus didn't know he was supposed to be born again. And so to Nicodemus, up to that point, up to that encounter with Jesus, it was a mystery. God's will for Nicodemus' life was technically a mystery. And Jesus said, hey, Nicodemus, I've, I've got to explain something to you. And Nicodemus, of course, was so far from having any kind of a clue He demonstrated that he had no idea what Jesus was trying to present to him. And eventually Nicodemus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, got it. How about the disciples? They didn't have a clue. Didn't have a clue. Until after Jesus had died, was buried, rose again, ascended into heaven. It was a mystery, God's will. These men that spent three years with Rabbi Jesus, they didn't have a clue. It was a mystery. God's will for their lives was a mystery. They didn't know that they were to be established by the finished work of Jesus Christ. They didn't know that. It was a mystery. And so Paul is saying here, hey, this will help you out. Roman church. God's desire for mankind, for humankind, is to establish you according to Jesus Christ. That's God's design. That, and that may be mystery. And in, in Paul's time, it's, this is a mystery. This is a mystery because my brethren, Paul's brethren, the Jewish people, they thought rituals and traditions were the things that God wanted. Not even close. Not even close.
The mystery, John reports here in verse 7 once again, the mystery of God would be finished as he declared to his servants and his prophets. When we go through the Old Testament, and that's why we do on, uh, on a weekly basis, we realize that God the Father has always been saying from day one that Jew and Gentile will be saved as they submit the, their heart unto the Lord. And so this mystery is a heart issue. It's not a tradition or a works issue. It's a heart issue. And heart issues are individual. We can't gather together you know, around a, a bonfire and say, okay, let's all sacrifice and we, we all as a unit will be saved. God is saying, oh, no, it goes further than that. And as, we, as eventually we get to the book of Ephesians, we're going to see that the heart issue is an individual issue. And God wants and desires and commands that personal relationship with him. That's the mystery. I mean, it's easy to sacrifice to some degree. It's easy to, to submit works or whatever. as we go through the Old Testament, we realize that the mystery of God is revealed in the New Testament. The finished work of Jesus Christ. We're established by the finished work of Christ. Ah. So to God alone, wise be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. We also see Paul Speaking a little more of that and jot these down, take a look at it later. In Ephesians chapter 3, Paul speaks about the mystery. Likewise, Paul writing in Colossians chapter 2 concerning this subject matter. The mystery of God. Is this what John is trying to express? I don't know. He wasn't allowed to, to jot it down. But as I allowed my mind to wander a little bit, these are the conclusions that I began to come to. Heart issues have to be revealed individually. And so the, the Lord is saying here possibly, and this is just a suggestion, the Lord is saying, John, do not write these things down because I have to speak individually to each and every breathing human being. And I'm capable of doing that, John. Let there be no mistake. And we can relate to that. Those of us that are born again, we can relate to this personal conversation, can't we? I mean, that day that you were fed up, whatever your testimony is, that day you finally said, you know, God, if you're real, just show yourself. Many have that, that testimony. Many do. And we, from the heart, said, God, reveal yourself. When we said that prayer, that desperate prayer to the Lord, he heard that and he instantly responded. There's many testimonies that can conclude that here today. Other people have different experiences and things, and it's great. But it's a heart issue. It's a heart issue. And God the Holy Spirit is more than capable of of speaking to the individual heart. What this pulpit here does on a weekly basis throughout all of our activities here at Calvary Chapel, we present to the best of our ability that idea of desiring God. And it's a heart issue. And only God can see your heart. So there'll be a delay no longer, it's reported to John. A delay no longer, but the mystery of God would be finished as he declared to his servants, the prophets. As declared in the Old Testament, now in the New Testament, the book of Revelation, hey, I'm going to now reveal the mystery. 
Verse 8, Then the voice which I heard from heaven spoke to me again and said, John, go take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel who stands on the sea and on the earth. John, go take that book. Okay. So I went to the angel and said to him, Give me the little book. Fair enough. And the angel said to John, John, take this little book and eat it. It will make your stomach bitter, but it will be sweet as honey in your mouth. Take it and eat it. The psalmist tells us in Psalm 19, King David writing in Psalm 19, 9, that, Lord, your word is sweet as honey. Sweet as honey. Then I took the little book, John tells us, out of the angel's hand, and I ate it. Much like the scenario with Ezekiel. I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it, and it was as sweet as honey in my mouth. Just like David said, oh, it's sweet. Sweet. But when I had eaten it, my stomach became bitter. Psalm 34. I've tasted and seen, I've tasted and seen that the Lord is good. Scripture telling us, hey, turn pages on the word. Get fulfilled. Get refreshed. Get renewed. Get guided. Be provided for when you read, study, and proclaim God's word. Taste and see. And so as John 8, as commanded, ate this little book, it was sweet to his mouth, but it was bitter to his stomach. What are the possibilities here? And, and Scripture doesn't give us the explanation, but allows us to have civilized conversation over a coffee or something. But if this, this is not a heaven or hell issue, technically... But yet we do need to draw some attention from our lives to this. Sweet and bitter. When we first came to the Lord, it was a sweet, sweet thing, wasn't it? We tasted, and it was sweet. We found salvation, and that's sweet. Oh, it's sweet today. It's sweet today. Renew our posture, Lord, of your goodness. Let us be reminded of, again, your patience, Lord. Man, I'm just amazed how patient God is with me. And when I'm reminded of that, and I'm thankfully reminded repeatedly, because that humbles me, and it turns me to praise. I say, thank you, Lord, for your patience, your kindness, and your long-suffering. I find that coming out of my thought process often because God is so good to you and I. And I'm so grateful to be reminded of that. Thank you, Lord. So it's sweet. That is sweet. And so John is eating this little book and it's sweet, but then all of a sudden it hits his stomach, if you will, and it turns bitter. You know, we've come to the Lord. We have found salvation. We know, you and I, we know as born-again believers, we know we're going to heaven. We know that. Because simply because what Jesus did for us. Nothing that we've done. But we know, we are confident that we're going to heaven because we've accepted the finished work of Jesus Christ. That mystery has been revealed to us. Hey, Jesus, he's the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through through Jesus. And man, now we get it. Wow, the mystery's been revealed. Wow, that's sweet. But yet, 
When we go to speak to friends, when we go to speak to loved ones, when we go to speak to people that don't have Christ, and they turn and reject us and, and mock us and ridicule us, happens all the time. When we're just trying to bring the good news, we're trying to be the good delivery, newspaper delivery men and women. We try to hand the good news to someone that needs it, and they take that paper, they open it up, they don't like what they read, and they roll it back up, and they start beating us over the head. We say, hey, I'm just the delivery guy. I didn't write the paper. I'm just the delivery boy. I'm just the delivery gal. That's all. You got an issue with the news, man, go to the editor, Jehovah God. But people don't do that. They pour it out on us. And it becomes bitter in our lives. So the word is sweet, and yet it's bitter at the same time. And that's what John has experienced. And he's not quite sure, wow, why did I experience this? There's no question in my, in my mind. He's wondering, what's this all about? He doesn't have a clue. He's like you and I. What's, what's going on here? And John's thinking in the back of his, his mind, hmm, I wonder what's happening. Sweet and yet bitter. And so nonetheless, in verse 11... John reports that the angel says to him, John, you must prophesy again about many peoples, nations, tongues, and kings. Now, John is writing the book of Revelation of, what, 45, 55 A.D., something like that. Let me, let me just back up and say, John wrote the book of Revelation prior, in other words, later to come, were John's epistles and gospel. Later, after the Revelation. John wrote after the Revelation. And as Sam has so brilliantly and beautifully been teaching us, the stout-hearted men, which we've taken a break, by the way, but when we kick back off in the first of the year, the stout, stout-hearted men, we will continue in the Gospel of John. But the theme, as, as Sam brought us through the first three epistles of John, the theme is clearly, John is saying, love one another. Love one another. John was never saying, well, get the biggest congregation you can put together. Well, get as many likes as you possibly can on Facebook. It's not what John was saying at all. John, previously the son of thunder, all of a sudden has been transformed into the apostle of love. And John was just saying, no matter what, hey, no matter what happens, body of Christ, love one another. John's a totally different guy after this revelation here. And I'm convinced, and this is just my opinion, but I'm convinced that as God the Holy Spirit touched John, it was after this revelation, this mystery, this heart issue. John, prior to this revelation, was concerned about his position. Oh, should we call fire down, Lord, and wipe them out? Things like that. All, all very, you know, humanistic things. John was all part of it. Yeah, yeah, let's go fight. You know, let's fight the power, you know, all this sort of thing. But then after the revelation... Through his, by evidence, by John's latter writing, he was a different guy. Who else was different after the resurrection of Jesus Christ? Well, of course, Peter. And the ladies are going through 1 Peter on Monday and Tuesdays. Different 
men that have been changed. Love. And John, you've eaten this book. And it's been sweet to your taste, but it's become bitter. And now that you've ingested this little approachable book, this little USA Today, easy to read, easy to comprehend, You've ingested it completely, and now you must prophesy again. John, you're not done. You think you're done. Oh, and the Roman government thinks, John, that they're going to put your life to an end. But no, you're going to prophesy again. You're not done. You're not finished. You must prophesy again. Now, you must continue to bring this good news. John, that's your job. That's your job. Now that you've eaten and you've ingested, you now need to represent that little book. And I'm telling you, what that little, what's that little book all about? I'm convinced it's all about the heart issue. And once that heart is changed, love begins to come out. And it's not an easy thing to love the person that is wrong to you. And again, remember as we were reminded earlier this morning, Jesus hanging on the cross, beaten, naked, shredded, had every... possibility of calling down 12 legions of angels but yet he loved you and I so much he said father forgive them they know not what they do that's incredible absolutely incredible and even to this day Jesus as he's at the right hand of the father the right hand of authority he intercedes for you and I. Jesus Christ intercedes for us. Prays for us, in other words. Hey, strengthen my brother. Oh, strengthen my sister here. It's incredible. Absolutely incredible. So, John, you must prophesy again. John, you're not done. You may think you're done. The Roman government may think you're done. But let me tell you something. I have the authority here. <laughs> not done. So once you're released from your island getaway, <laughs> you're going to continue to do the good work that you're already used to. What a blessing. And you're going to speak to many peoples, nations, tongues, and kings. So prepare yourself, John. It's going to be a great journey. And John's message clearly love one another. Amen? If I could ask the worship team to come join me. That little book, all we really know for sure is that little book came down from heaven. That was made clear. That's what the Lord has allowed us to understand. What about the little book, Lord? Well, it came down from heaven, and that motivates me to want to meditate and consider what it might have been. And I truly believe that that little book demonstrates that heart issue, that as I spend time with the Lord, he'll continue to teach me how to love one another, how to love my God and express that love to those around. God's desire, as Paul told us in Romans chapter 16, God's desire is to establish you and I, anyone that's breathing. God's desire is to establish anyone that's breathing, establish us according to Jesus Christ. That's God's desire and design. God did not exempt anyone in that posture. If you're breathing... 
you have an opportunity to receive Jesus Christ. If you haven't done that, well, we've seen this morning that the mighty angel said, hey, there's no longer a delay. No longer a delay. No longer a delay for what? Well, once again, the Apostle Paul, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, today is the day of salvation. Today. Today's the day. Are you born again, Nicodemus? If you're not, you'll never see the heavenly realm. So today is the day of salvation. Psalm 95 reminds us that if we ignore today the day of salvation, Psalm 95 tells us if we ignore the call of salvation today, if we don't respond to God's voice today, Psalm 95 tells us, we run the risk of hardening our heart. That's why Paul was saying, hey, today's the day. If you don't receive Christ today, you're drifting a little further away. Just a little bit further away, and that's not a good thing. This little book, I only make the suggestion that this little book explained that God the Father, God the Son, Jesus Christ, God the Holy Spirit, the triune God, wants to have a personal relationship. And that will be established by the triune God and Him only. And so it's personal. There's no coat, coattail salvation. There's no, well... I'm a child of Abraham. Jesus said, you know what? God could raise up children of Abraham from these rocks. No. I believe that little book, it's not explained because we have to come one-on-one. -on -one. And then God, Him and only Him, that can speak the language that we understand that only He can speak. I believe that little book is explaining. It's a hard issue. So John, don't write it down. Don't bother. I'll take care of it. I will meet one-on-one. -on -one. And so won't you come to Him today because today is the day of salvation? Don't harden your heart. We've delivered good news. We are good newspaper delivery men and women. We're good deliveries. We're good deliverers. And God strengthened us to continue to deliver the good news. Because blessed are the feet of them who bring the good news. And that's what we do here at Calvary Chapel. Amen. Be encouraged. If you don't have Christ, Simply turn from your sin, ask Jesus to forgive you, and receive him into your heart today, because today is the day of salvation. Accept him today. Be encouraged this day, this week, as the Lord tarries. Join us by standing, and let's remain steadfast in all that we do. Hey, real quick before we start, we have a guy that's getting ready to join our worship team as a bass player, and uh, he had a birthday yesterday. So we're going to sing happy birthday to Mr. John Nagel. John, raise your hand up out there, buddy boy. Here we go in the back. There's his birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear John. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Well, John, you have the uh, the wonderful thing to say. I've never heard it sound as bad. So there we go. <laughs> Happy birthday, buddy. God bless you. Praise the Lord.
the class and move a bow. In Christ you will be impossible. Knowing our labor is not in vain. In Christ you will be impossible. Knowing our labor is not in vain. Of death is sin, the power of sin is all. Thanks be to God, salvation is in Jesus Christ. And pass, move the ball, in Christ you be impossible. Knowing our labor is not in vain. Christ to be impossible, knowing our labor is not in vain. you have a great week. Hey, listen, I've got to say it, man. I haven't said it. I didn't say it. Williams, I want to say it now. The L.A. Dodgers are world champions. Hey. Oh, yeah. Woo-hoo. God bless you. Hey, we got coffee over here. Come on over and have coffee. And also, guys, don't forget about signing up for the choir, for the Christmas choir. We're going to have a lot of fun. So sign up. God bless you. Have a great, great week and day. Pastor Greg, Calvary Chapel, Harupa Valley. Hey, we're so glad that you've been enjoying the videos, and we just know that God has been touching you and just giving you a blessing through these teachings. But you know, we'd like to give you a challenge. Since this material is available, as you know, you can go to the website and pull these videos down, but we would like to challenge you. Since you're enjoying these teachings on a regular basis, we want to challenge you, why not share these videos. You've got lots of friends on Facebook and so forth and social media. Why not inject the gospel message, the Bible teachings of of the Lord into, into your share partners? It would be a great opportunity to maybe start a conversation, but we would really like you to be encouraged and consider passing these teachings on. We want people to be benefited, so let's allow the Lord to do what he would like to do. But in the meantime, we're so glad that you've been joining us and enjoying these teachings. They will continue to come as the Lord tarries, but again, enjoy, enjoy the Lord. Thank you so much, and continue to pray for Calvary Chapel here in the city of Harupa Valley. God bless you, Pastor Greg, once again, and we'll catch up with you next time. Have a great week in the Lord. Bye now.